to calculus to section 6.9. Yeah, I got to have some piano music or something in the background, uh, or at least drums. Um, so we're going to explore again exponential functions and the word problems that you guys uh, worked on in the past in your uh, pre-calculus course. And we're going to add the calculus components uh, at the end of the problem to analyze the solution that we get. So you will see later on as you move on through coursework, uh, hopefully eventually you're taking differential equations. And differential equations uh, are um, uh, very interesting. Uh, all of your engineering and physics and stuff comes from differential equations. And uh, you want to check the stability of solutions. You want to check the validity of solutions. You want to check um, what's happening with solutions uh, as uh, time goes to infinity or whatever. Um, so all of that is going to be touched upon in this uh, case. We're not going to do differential equations here, but we are going to uh, look at some of the, uh, once the uh, once you solve the exponential model, what you can do uh, to analyze the answer. So um, we start this again with those, uh, the, the very basic equation, which was y is equal to a e to the kt. And we immediately draw the two graphs, which I had the previous time. So we have the x-axis, uh, oh, I use t. So x-axis is t, time. Uh, y is the y-axis. And then a is the uh, that initial point. So this is for k larger than 0, which is called the growth. So these graphs are identical to the ones you, you had before. And this would be decay. Uh, T again, 4K less than zero. So if you pay attention in your pre-calculus course, you know that every single formula from that section was this formula here, just using different letters. So population in time was initial population e to the KT. The amount of money you have was the principal e to the rate times t. The mass at any time t was initial mass e to the kt, and that was a decay model, so k is less than 0. Uh, population grows, so k larger than 0. Uh, money accumulates in the account, again, the rate is larger than zero. So you have the growth models, you have decay models, but if you look at the form of the equation, they're all the same equation which reflect the, the basic case. So now we always look at the, we can look at the real data and uh, figure out some cool stuff. So we look at, let's say, population. So let's take a look at the population. <coughs> if you're looking at the population, you will go and say, um, I'm going to pull the numbers from the from the internet. So. Um, The world population, uh, 7.4 billion. So in 2016, which is time, we have 7.4 billion population. That's the data point. Let me see world population in, let's say, 1980. So in 1980, Believe it or not, it was 
Exactly. 1950 was 2.6 billion. Want to look at these numbers a little bit closer? Because you definitely can. <laughs> Nineteen fifty was sixty six years ago. Two point six billion on a planet. You have now that much in two countries. India and China. India and China, yes. What are the other countries that have that many? None. What's the third one? US with about three hundred and thirty thousand. Three million, sorry, thousand. <laughs> Thousand. That's only in in uh, in, in uh, New Jersey. <laughs> no, that, uh, that's Somerset County. Yes, 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 yes. I know that I was looking up that I needed that information. Uh, yeah, Somerset County. Uh, so uh, Japan, those four tiny islands that you can barely find on a map. Ninety-five million. Indonesia, a lot, <laughs> over 100 million, but they have about 1,000 islands. So, so there is a lot, um, a lot of people. The carrying capacity of the planet, depending on which school of thought you look at, ranges anywhere from 10 billion to 15.2 billion. Now that's a cap. Carrying capacity, what does it mean? Carrying capacity means the resources, the food, and all the stuff, the energy that we need. So if it's if it's 10 billion, yeah, we're going to look at some numbers now. <laughs> so... Going back to, to talk about these, uh, we can compute some numbers, but how do you deal with population? Well, you let me know whether you want to use uh, 1980 as the starting point or 1950 as a starting point. Which one you want to use? 1950, okay. So if you're using 1950 as the standing point, we are going to go there and zero out the time. So that's the beginning of time. Let's call it a Big Bang, <laughs> all right? And we have 2.6 billion at the Big Bang, which will reset all other years. This one will be 30 and 4.5, and uh, the one on top would be 66 and 7.4. So for all exponential models across mathematics, when you know what your starting point is, you zero that out. There's no reason for us to compute with 1950 uh, and all of that if we can zero it out and work with 0, 30, and 66. So now, we write our population model. And we understand that to get the model, we need to know these two values. If I know these two values, I can <coughs> compute others. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to Use my initial point and say that population was 2.6 billion with the unknown initial population e to the k times and the time is zero. 
So how much is k times 0? And e to the 0 is 1. So this entire thing here is 1. From here we see clearly that p0 is 2.6 billion, which makes sense because that's when we zeroed out the time, right? So that's the initial case. That's where we start. So now our model looks like this. A little bit better. I still have to figure out k. So figuring out k, what do I do? I use any of the two points above. So let's use uh, 66 and 7.4, which is current state. So now we know that we have 60, uh, whoops, 66 billion, oops. We know we have 7.4 billion, 2.6 e to the kt, but t is 66. So we use abacus for calculations from now on, easier. 7.4 divided by 2.6 is 2.85 is equal to e to the 66k. And how do we solve for k? Ln both sides, very good. So Ln of 2.85 is... Now make sure you are leaving four decimals once you once you hit LNs. One point zero four four seven three is equal to sixty six K from where K is equal to zero point zero one five eight seven four significant figures uh, uh, lns and exponential functions pile up error quickly so make sure that you have four at least four non-zero decimals so now we have our mathematical model for population 2.6 e to the 0 0.01587 t also known as math model mathematical model population model whatever you want to call it but it's exponential model with this, you can predict the future because you can go as far as you want with it. Or can you? So what would be the year that you are interested in? 2030. 2030. So you want to know what is the population for year 2030. Awesome. Awesome. Well, what's T for 2030? 80. 80. Because remember, our initial year where the Big Bang was in 1950, right? So if the, the Big Bang is 1950, that means that 2030 is 80 years later. So all you need to do is to plug in 80 in the calculation. So population by this model should be 0.01587 times 80, 2.6 times e to the open parenthesis 0.01587 times 80.
my calculator gives me nine and a quarter billion. That's 14 years away. Is that accurate? Well, we can check this using regression uh, to find the mathematical model because we actually have three points, we only use two. If you involve more, you, you need to use uh, regression. But then looking at this, this model actually should be fairly accurate for the years that are close by. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, unleash Excel upon the computer. Actually, no, I can use the Excel over here. It's somewhere. There we go. And we're going to take a look at the regression. Can we use new plugins for the Of course. That's what the life is all about. So we're going to start with um, zero and two point six. Then we had what were the other two points? Thirty and four point five. 66 and 7.4. So we can put these in the chart. We select the data. We go into insert and we do the scatter plot. Oops. So once we have the scatter plot for these right click on one of the data points add trend line check off exponential which is the first one and say display equation on the chart this is going to provide the best possible fit to these points with the exponential equation and uh, it might be too small for you to read, but it says 2.6699 e to the 0.0158x. It's pretty much dead on money of what we had. Using two points, they use the three points, so they have a better precision, right? So Excel gives us the exponential model P of T to be 2.6699 E to the 0 0.0158 T. That's what the regression gives us, and we calculate it without regression pretty dang close. All right, so cool. We know how to find the model. We know how to do all of these things. Now the question is, uh, how do we understand the? How do we understand this? Uh, this answer, is this something that it's valuable? And this is where calculus comes in. What are the three concepts of calculus that we learn in calculus? <laughs> the first one is limits. The second one is, and the third one is. Integrals, very good. So limits, derivatives, integrals. I can apply all three of those to this particular function, and they will have particular meaning. So I will start with the limit. What would the limit be good for? Well, if I go with the limit and I send time to infinity, for this particular function, 2.6699 e to the 0.0158t, we see that we get infinity on the other end. This means that this model, for practical purposes, 
for long period of time is garbage. Because we know that the planet is going to have finite surface area, finite resources, finite amount of energy that we can all use. And even if we colonize other planets, you will never be able to colonize enough to have infinity. So, this model cannot be used. This model cannot be used at all. Uh, there are better models for, uh, for um, the um, population <coughs> prediction. Uh, one of those models would be the logistics model. We're not covering that one, but you, you can definitely research it. Uh, logistics model would look like this. You start at some initial time, it grows exponentially and then flattens out because you, you can't have any more. And the, the, that, low, that uh, upper limit, uh, which is the horizontal asymptote, would be your uh, carrying capacity K or C, whatever uh, is labeled as. Um, and then, as I said, it ranges, depending on which paper you read, it ranges anywhere from 10 to 15 billion, 15.2 billion for our planet. If it's 15 billion, we're halfway there. So now, um, you are able to take the limit, set it equal to infinity. It doesn't really make sense to take any other limit than this, because any other limit would just be computing the y value, which is the population, as you approach that year. right? If I take the limit as uh, t goes to... Um, 80, I'll be getting the result, right? Because remember what the limits are. Fancy way to find the y value. So you'll be computing that limit by plugging into t, and then you have the same answer as we did with calculation. So if, if we are looking for the limit at 80, which represents 2030, it would approach 9.25. So we technically check only with this. I'm going to erase this graph because we are not discussing this, but I want you to know that there is more. So we can do a limit, right? We can also do the derivative. Derivative is the rate of change. So if I compute the, the derivative, p of t, well, that's going to multiply these two numbers. So I have 2.6699 times 0 0.0158. That gives you 0 0.04218 times e to the 0 0.0158t because we know that the derivative of e to the x is itself e to the x. So we get to copy the whole thing. Now, what would this equation do? Very good. It tells us the rate at which population changes. So now, if I want to compute, if I want to compute, let's say, at 80, P prime at 80, it will be 0 0.04218 E, 0 0.0158 times 80, No coffee. And I get zero point fifteen. This means can anyone tell me what this means? What is this zero point fifteen? Not the percent. Yes. Yes. So in the year 2030, we are adding 
150 million people to the population of the planet. That's what it means. Because 0.15 billion is 150 million, right? So this calculation here means uh, for when you take the derivative that in that year, the year you're computing, right, the change in that year, so that year adds 150 million people. Yes? How did you get the When you take the derivative, the exponent number multiplies the coefficient number, chain rule. So do we understand that what derivative does? So derivative, if you take the derivative of the equation, you will get a new new formula, new equation. And if you compute the times any year, you will see how many more people were added in that year because the derivative measures the rate, instantaneous rate of change. Now, yeah, I know that a year is not instant, right? It takes nine months to cook the baby up and all that stuff. But the, the change in population is, again, over the year because this is discrete data, right? 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, and so on. Yes? So that 0.15 is basically just saying that in 2030, 150 million people are going to be added. There will be more, yes. So that's what's added. In, in 2030, 150 uh, billion. Now, that's the, that's the death, right? That's, that's the birth minus deaths, right? So that's the, that's the difference. Uh, nothing in this case, yeah. You are thinking of position and then velocity and then acceleration and then jerk. There's the, the third one. You can go, uh, in this case, we don't need it. There's nothing we can. Third concept is? Integration. So I can integrate over a span of 10 years. Let's go from 10 to 20. And we are integrating our original problem, which is uh, 2.6699e to the 0.0158t dt. As we integrate this, we are going to end up with 2.6699 divided by 0.0158 and then we're having e to the 0 0.0158t computed from 10 to 20. So now we compute this. One sixty-eight point ninety-eight, one sixty-nine. Easier uh, times e to the so e to the times two that's uh, three sixteen minus when you plug in twenty minus ten. What is this? Sorry?
I can't hear you from air conditioning. I, I, I heard you said people and you said the billions, so I think you're saying something good, but I can't hear exactly what you're saying because of the air conditioning. So the volume up. You up? Yes. Yes. The cumulative amount of people over a period of 10 years. Just trying to see if there's. Uh, did anyone compute this on their own? This is from uh, 1960 to 1970. So this ten, uh, 10 to uh, period, uh, 10 to 20, is, come on, Pen. Uh, no, the 15, 150, you mean 150 million from the no, derivative? No, I'm saying how, that's, that's more, you said 33.9 billion. Mm -hmm. That's more than the entire population. Yeah, because it was, uh, it was about 3, 3 billion population. Right. So, okay, so now let's understand this accumulation. It doesn't really work nicely for this, but it works nicely for um, electrical engineering, if you're computing the charge and energy for physics and so on. Uh, I will just tell you here that uh, approximately what you have uh, for in this span of 10 years is you're going to have about 3 billion people roaming the planet, okay? Because remember that in year uh, 1950, you had 2.6 billion. In year 1980, you had uh, 4.5 billion, right? So this span is good for that 3 billion kind of range. So I said 30 years. Because it's 10 years. So that, that, that 3... Oh. So what the, what the integrals do is they do give you the cumulative the cumulative uh, amount. So what's going to see every person, well, not every person, but let's say most of the people that were alive in 1960 were alive in 1961, 1962, and that person is counted every year in this average. Can, can, I, can I do something on the board so I can explain my memory? Sure. So, uh, so take let's 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 take Joe, who was alive in 1960, counted as a in, in part of the three billion population. Joe will be counted in 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66. So it's counted over and over and over and over and over again. So this is the cumulative amount of people that lived in these ten years. So in the first year you're going to have 3 billion. In the second year, the same 3 billion, a little bit more. The uh, third year, 3 billion, a little bit more. When you add all of those, you have 10 years, 3 times 3 is 33 billion people. But every person is counted 10 times because you're looking at 10, 10 years. 3 billion times 10, so that's 33 billion over there. Now, that's accumulation. That's accumulation. If you want the average amount, you would use the same integral, but you would divide it by 10. Because if you remember from calculus 1, there was that formula that computed the average, and it was 1 over b minus a times the integral we just computed. 
that one will give you the average per year. The average per year. So integral counts all of the people, but it counts every person 10 times because every person, right, uh, if you're alive. Now again, these are all averages. Obviously, some, a lot of people died in 61. A lot of people died in 62, but more were born, right? So you can kind of substitute and the increase. So this is going to be right in the middle. We can check those values because I believe I still have this on the screen. And yes, I, I do. Uh, 1960, it was 3.04. 3.04. Well, what happened with stuff you wrote? Uh, I figured out the word. And uh, it was 3.7. So this is your 1960, and this is your 1970 world population. So looking at these, at these two, would you agree that that is smack in the middle? Right? That's what integrals do. Integrals take, well, when you divide by 10. So integrals accumulate because it's summation, right? So what? It's like similar to the concept of finding the area in the third. Well, this the is point? the area in the third. So you find the accumulation, and I hope you guys understand why it's 33 billion people. Because every person was counted 10 times. You count the person, think of it taking a census for 10 years straight for the world. So someone knocks on your door and says, who are you? And you say, I'm Joe, and he writes Joe and your address and leaves. And next year, knocks again. Who are you? Joe. Writes your name and the address. Comes back next year. Does that 10 years. Generated 10 papers, right? For the same person. So that's why you have 33 billion. You have 33 billion of these those papers, right? If you wanted the average, you would divide it by 20 minus 10, and then you would have the average uh, amount per year. Which is technically why this is useless for this. Right? For this. Because for what's yeah. called for the it's the, well, yeah, it shows the average rise of the of the population over a period of 10 years. If you divide it by 10, it will give you the, well, let's, let's, let's just add that as a, as a footnote. Uh, this is, as I said, useless for this application, but if you do the average, then it's, it's useful. Uh, as I said, you use this stuff for physics, figure out the energy, so on, charge the battery, charge, you know, a lot of other stuff. So if we go and say the average, so I'll do it in blue. So this is the average of how many people you have per year for those 10 years. Now, you have to be very careful, guys. This is different data than derivative, right? Derivative tells you how many more new people you have from year to year. This is telling you how many total people you have every year. So the derivative tells you you increased the population by 0.15 from last year. And this says this year I have 3.4 billion. All the average over a certain time. Uh, we're done with that. Moving on to the next uh, problem, which is going to have decay, which means half-life. And those of you who were in my pre-calculus one, you know what my favorite problem is. My yeah, the toothpaste, exactly. <laughs> So let's talk about decay problems. Uh, so decay problems, we first define the half-life. See, awesome problem. You still remember it. It's been a year and a half, right? So half-life. Half-life is a time, is the time, 
in which object decays half of its mass. So we have mass is equal to initial mass e to the kt, where k is negative, because it's a decay problem. Just want to check the stream is moving. Yes. No, wait. It says it's offline. Why it says it's offline? But it says it says it's streaming. Do what? Thank you. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's showing that it's streaming, but then the website, maybe if I refresh the, the YouTube. Hold on. Oh, it's live. Okay, good. Sorry for the heart attack. Okay, so this is what it means, guys. Um, the uh, initial mass, so capital M, is the initial mass. So what is the initial mass? Uh, you have uh, a sample of, I don't know, uranium, plutonium, or uh, you have a, a carcass of some sort. You have a banana peel. It doesn't matter. It all decays. Different types of decay, but they all decay. You have a pile of garbage. So it's literally mass in grams, kilograms, tons, whatever. Right? You have tons of garbage. So depending on what is the main composition of garbage, it can take, right, the compost, banana peels and stuff. If it's organic, it's going to decay quickly. If it's uh, plastic, it's going to take thousands, tens, tens and hundreds of thousands of years. So initial mass. So half-life, half-life, the notation is lambda, just like in a video game. So we have... Uh, we have this situation where the original mass, which is the initial mass, is cut in half if you, oops, sorry, forgot to, the T should be lambda. So lambda is time. Lambda is time in years. Well, no, there are some elements that decay in a matter of seconds. It's okay. So now these masses will cancel. So we see that the half-life does not depend on how much stuff you have. It only depends on which element it is, which is encoded in K. So we have one-half is equal to E to the K lambda. You ln both sides to get rid of the E, because you are digging to figure out what lambda is. And you have that ln one half is equal to k lambda, from where you have the equation for lambda to be ln 0 0.5 over k, or you can solve it for k as ln 0 0.5 over lambda, depending which equation you need. So my favorite problem of all time is this uh, toothpaste from um, 1940s, which was the first toothpaste for teeth whitening. It's called Doramad. And um, in all of their infinite wisdom at that time, they figured out that Radioactive elements glow, so if you put that in the toothpaste, you get uh, to make teeth very white. So what they did is they used the radioactive um, isotope of thorium, 229, in considerable amounts, and created the toothpaste, which gave off this wonderful white glow. 
and then everyone who used it died quickly <laughs> in a matter of years. So it came from having this uh, lavish advertising, which was awesome for 1940s, okay? That's, that's the uh, graphic design. The top of the line, you see how they're scrubbing teeth and making it white and also cool. It's yellow poster, but it's okay. To moving to these, where it says, thou shall not use our doormat because death is around us, amongst us. So, um, let's do a calculation and um, see how these corpses are doing. <laughs> so, what I want to know is, it's safe to assume, well, it's a fact, that everyone who used it is dead. And it's been dead for at least 70 years, but let's go with 80 years. We can, we can round it off. So... Shall we use 80? 80 years. Awesome. So I want to know, what's the percent of Doramed on their teeth uh, after 80 years? And the only number that we need for this calculation is the half-life of uh, thorium-229, which is, I believe, uh, 7,340 years. Yes. That's correct? Yeah. 7,340 years. Awesome. <laughs> Do what? He thought I was saying it off the top of my head. I just looked it up. Oh, no, he knows that. <laughs> You don't know how to be a player, man. <laughs> but this was a perfect opportunity to just say yes and move along. No, he knew. He's on my phone. Oh. He's too late. <laughs> so, where do we begin? Well, we begin by figuring out the, uh, K, right? And we know that K is uh, ln of 0 0.5 over lambda which is ln of 0 0.5 divided by 7,340. Now remember keeping the four decimals, so ln of 0.5 close parenthesis divided by 7,340 to give us negative 0 0.00004097. which gives us the model for our thorium, which is in the toothpaste, that looks like this. So that's the model. Now I want to know, after 80 years, how much of the toothpaste which is thorium, is left. That means I'm looking to find the percent, so call it P times M, M 0 0.00009443 times 80 years has passed. M's drop on both sides. So guys, I'm looking for percent of thorium that remains after 80 years. So I'm multiplying the unknown percent variable, P. So P times M, percent of original amount. So if you're looking for the mass, you wouldn't be able to do that, right? No. Not with this calculation. So P, the percent is equal to, we put everything in the abacus. So I have E raised to the second answer. And then times 80. Something is wrong. My calculator just exploded. So, 
be raised to 0.1234 Oh, I know what's the problem. I forgot the parentheses. Raised to open parenthesis negative point you know, nine four four three times eighty close parenthesis syntax error. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I use the negative minus. Okay, so zero point nine nine two four seven. We could just call it nine nine point two four. which implies that the amount of thorium left on their teeth after 80 years is 99%. So these are the most beautiful corpses <laughs> ever. Did they document like how many died? They have to be very deep. That's Yeah, look at that. This is how much is left. So in 80 years, about three quarters of one percent decayed. <laughs> this is what's left. Ninety-nine percent of the thorium they put on their teeth is still there. So you have to brush like once. No, no, they brush more. Yes. Oh, that should be the slogan. Brush once, guys. I mean, yeah, it's look, it, it's it's funny now because eighty, you know, eighty years pass, right? Probably like in three hundred years, someone will be like, <laughs> they used to drink milk. That's why they used to live like only ninety years. You know, we don't know what's bad until it's figured out, right, through science. So yeah, apparently there is a good cholesterol and bad cholesterol, right? Generally, I know I'm just nervous and cranky when my cholesterol is low, so I eat. No, uh, 40s in Germany, twice Second World War. 40s, yeah. Yeah, because, well, remember that all the radioactive stuff started happening in uh, right after the second, so between the two world wars, that's when, uh, that's when all the radioactive, so the nuclear era starts, uh, nuclear research, radioactive elements, everything starts at that time. And the atomic bomb, again, it's uh, first half of 1940s. So, and then right after that, nuclear, nuclear power plants. Uh, the, the, it's not the, the, it's, nuclear is not used to kill people. People don't die off of the nuclear when the bomb explodes, because it has it has three. That bomb, those bombs have three impacts. The nuclear nuclear uh, element is just there afterwards. Yes. 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 Especially considering who's in charge of the They got close. They got close. Okay. Uh, what do we do with this? What do you mean nothing? We do the limits, we do the derivatives, we do the integrals. <laughs> right? So we get to we get to see how much uh, thorium is lost per per year, how much uh, thorium, the average, right, if you do the integral, and then one interesting thing happened with limits. How long do you have to wait for all of the thorium to go away? And the answer is? That's going to be half. Twice that? Then, then a quarter is left. Uh-huh. So, infinitely long. Okay, cool. So I want to do that limit because, oh, we kind of have to hurry up. Um, I want to do that limit, guys, because as I, as I do the limit, 
for the for the thorium thingy, which is m. Uh, we send uh, t to infinity. Uh, e to the negative 0.00009443t, we get zero. So if you wait infinitely long, if you wait infinitely long, you are going to have zero deposits. We're not elves, so, right? Definitely not elves, right? <laughs> However, um, I want to introduce another concept. If you go into Mathematica, I'm not sure what's going on. Why is this stuck working on it? Uh, before this uh, comes up, I just want to discuss this briefly, uh, understanding how this, these things work. I want to bring up So the way we use Mathematica, I'm going to just to go here, uh, type double equal sign, which is the wool from Alpha Query. It only works if you if you are connected to the internet. And you, let's say, type Advil. If you type any type of a drug in Mathematica, you are going to get everything that you need to cook it and um, also <laughs> the specifications for it. Uh, in terms of half-life and everything else. So uh, over here somewhere, there it is, biological half-life is uh, 1.9 hours. We are going to round that to two hours for easy calculation. Uh, then uh, what's the size of the tablet? Is, uh, uh, what do you buy? 200 milligrams. And you take two of those, right? Two, okay. Let's let's take two. <laughs> let's let's not go for right off the bat. Yeah. Let's go with minor pains, no root canal done. All right. So 400 milligram pill. Well, but but times two. That's 400, right? Tape two together. All right. <laughs> and uh, half-life is two hours. So you take 400, wait two hours. How much is left? 200. So that's two hours. Every time I do, do the arrow, is 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 uh, is lambda. And then wait another two hours. How much is left? Now, when, when, after how many hours can you take another pill? After four hours, right? Is it time? Yeah, it's time. Every time you pass lambda, it's two hours, right? On the first pass of a lambda and the second pass of a lambda. So 300 out of 400 metabolized in the body and 100 left. You're introducing new 400 and now you have 500 in your system. You are waiting two hours for the first half-life. It goes down to 250. You take another two hours. It goes down to 125. Is it time for another dose after 400? Yes. So now it's 525. You see what's happening here? You have to understand how the half-life and how exponential stuff works. The dosage is increasing through time because your body never, by this model, gets to metabolize 100% of the body. In your body is every medication you took since the baby still in insignificantly small amounts, right? But it's floating around because it doesn't metabolize. What's the graph for, for decay? Right? It, it's not going to touch zero. It's not going to touch zero. And it's going to be zero at infinity. But our expiration day is what? 100 years? At best. So kind of lay off. You don't have to. You know? <laughs> kind of give it a break. Um, take as much as, you know, prescribed. Obviously normal, but 
don't don't be your own doctors. You know what I mean? Like yeah, three. Come on. <laughs> I don't have to take it in four hours. Yes. I have a question about limit population. We'll talk about it. What? Yeah. What is? It has to do with you saying that there's finite resources. Uh, we'll talk. Let me just uh, end the stream. Bye, stream.